Hey guys, Jen here with Chaos and Grace, and in today's video, it's gonna be all about my super simple DIY homeschool planner for our 2019-2020 school year. So this is our eighth year of homeschooling, and I think in all of those eight years, I have been through a different kind of planner every single year. Yes, that is eight different types of homeschool planners. I have done reviews on a few of them. I will throw links in the description box, iCards up above for you guys to check them out so you can see the different variety of planners that I have been through and the reviews that I've done on them. This year, I wanted something so different that I could not find in any kind of planner. I couldn't figure out how to make it work. I came real close to getting a happy planner just because, you know, that arc system, you can take things out and put things in. But um, I settled on just doing a super simple binder version of my own binder. I made everything in here because having a high schooler required a totally different kind of planning. The planning for him and for the records that I need to keep for high school are way different than my three littles, but I still wanted everything in one spot and I did not want some big, huge, bulky planner. So this binder is something that I found on Amazon. Now I actually did order a one and a half inch and they sent me a one inch. Um, I've never really had that happen before, but I really didn't have time either to mess around with it and to return something and wait for a new one and have a delay in shipping and all of that nonsense. So I'm making it work. So on the inside of the binder, I just Velcroed a little notepad in here, something for me to make notes and just kind of brain dump and I just broke it. That's okay. We'll still use it. I'll fix it. I'm finding the best thing to do is to take my normal planner and to write my to-do list in here because this binder will stay open all day long on the table and I will always look back to it. So I'm using this right now to transfer my to-do list for the day so that as I have a moment in between homeschooling things, I can knock something else off my to-do list. This is just a page that I printed out because I like all of this scripture. I've used it in planners in the past or it's been in planners in the past and it's all very pertinent and very inspiring. And I trimmed it out with some washi tape. This is our rough schedule. Now, I strongly believe that a schedule is meant to serve you. You are not meant to serve your schedule. These times here are something I'm definitely not a stickler for. I am not a minute to minute person. We very much have flexibility as a center of our homeschool. But why I did this is just so that I know these are the things I wanna get done before lunch. These are the things that are getting done after lunch. Those times will change, they change pretty much daily. Now, two days a week, we do have therapy outside of the home. It's pretty far, it's 40 minutes one way without any hiccups along the way. Um, the times change. You can see, like you see here, this is Wednesday, we have two o'clock at therapy. That's still true, but we no longer have therapy on Thursdays at 8.45 in the morning. Um, and we've added speech therapy too. So this is now like Thursdays in the afternoon, but it could change later. But this is the core of the bare minimum of what I need to get done on homeschool days that we have therapy. Therapy days are pretty intense days for my kids. So we usually pick science or history. We do not do both. It works out that we actually end up doing science three days a week and history three days a week. So it all ends up balanced. But that is a rough idea of what our schedule looks like. And then I printed out a month at a glance. I did this with PowerPoint and I think Canva I used for the backdrop. And I've got some Happy Planner stickers in there. These little Happy Planner stickers I'm using as bucket lists. I like to have a bucket list for the month. I usually have a super long list on a totally separate piece of paper but I'm finding I really need to par things down with our really intense therapy schedule, both um, at therapy and what we need to do at home and getting everything done for high school. So short bucket list it is, it's working, I like it, it's simple. And here are my super simple planner pages. So in all the years and all the planners that I've used, I have found that I really, really don't like when there's subject boxes down here and then I have to fit four kids in one tiny little subject box. That drives me nuts. I would rather have big, huge boxes and not fill them up. So here's what these pages look like blank. I just have spot for the week, 
uh, Monday through Friday and then a spot for next week or really any notes that we want to do. And then here's how I use it. I will write our memory work up at the top. I will write in what our lessons are. Your pretty standard straightforward lesson planning. Now the one thing I did change, this is for this week, let me take this out. I did go back to color coding because it's just easier, my eye goes to it a lot faster. So the way our color coding works is Jackson is blue, Caleb is green, Evie is purple or pink. And I will write their individual work in their color and then anything we are doing together is in black. So that is group work. And I am skipping memory work this week because this is my first full week back to school since being sick and I'm taking it easy in the little places that I can. So this is it. This is pretty much it for my littles. The next week column I have used for making notes for that week for work projects and things that need to continue on into the next week. So I've got our whole school year's worth of papers in there and then we are going to flip to the high school section. Now this is still very much under construction because I am very new to this whole homeschooling high school thing. So I am taking things out and adding things in as I am finding that we need something or don't need something. So I like these. This is my spelling dictation for him that I keep in there. Uh, this I got from you the high school at home book. I just made a copy of it and stuck it in here. This is his four year study plan. This is everything he's doing this year. My goal with this planner is to keep my records all in one place too. So I'm kind of committed at this point to sticking with a binder DIY planner system for all four years of high school unless something else pops up where I get some other brilliant idea on how to modify something that already exists. I do like the price of this though. It was very, very cheap. I paid for the binder and everything else I had. So pretty much just the cost of the ink. This is a sheet for computing a GPA for all four years. So these will be your final grades. I got this out of the high school at home book also. And I will leave a Amazon link for that book down below in the description box for you guys. So this page I am probably going to redo, but I like the idea of it. I just want to tweak it a little bit, maybe give it a little more structure. I hand wrote this out because my printer was on the fritz. So this is what we stuck with for really June and July. So we've got the entire month of June in this one. Week one, all the work he's gonna get done. He had a mission camp that week. This is not week one of school. This is week one of June. Week two of June was our first week of homeschool and I wrote down here what he was going to be responsible for doing. Well, we did do language arts. We had not yet added ASL. And you can see this ADHD book. Let me show you what that book is. If you have a child with ADHD, I found out about this book from Tanya over at Project Happy Home. This is a fantastic book. Um, I'm working in this book both with my high schooler and with my soon-to-be eight-year-old, and it's great, 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 great. I love this book. So we worked in this book this week, a couple pages. We didn't start ASL yet. Language arts, we did do language arts, um, but we kind of got our feet wet as a new curriculum. Didn't do a whole lot, and we had to, I had to figure out, well, we together had to sit down and figure out how we were gonna structure it, how it was gonna or be organized. You can see farther on into this page what he's doing. Like he had to do five math lessons that week. He had to finish a unit. Um, science, I don't think we did science that week. Slavery and religious freedom was the unit he was working on. Um, we had some videos for him to watch for ASL and then he is practicing guitar daily. So all of the more detailed information on this, like math is pretty straightforward, do five lessons, pretty straightforward. But language arts, there's a lot more moving parts to that. He's got a lot of reading, a lot of writing, and all the detailed assignments and everything are in his planner because the big thing with his curriculum is he has to learn how to organize himself. And I do have a totally separate video on this coming, but this curriculum, we're using the good and the beautiful for him for high school. It is wonderful for building executive functioning skills, which is something that people with ADHD really, really suffer with. They have a really hard time with those skills. So we are working, we're still working out the kinks and trying to figure out the best way for him and me to work together because my brain works totally different than his as not having an ADHD brain. And he really has to be in charge of organizing himself. So we're trying to find a good common ground and June was um, a good month for that. Now, because I got so sick in June, we're now into July and we're still working on that. So far for high school, that's it. 
Like I said, I do not like big bulky planners. I don't like carrying all that stuff around. Now that I have to carry like a whole separate sensory bag, our <laughs> curriculum bag when we're going to co-op, um, library books, my purse, it's just so much. So the least bulky planner that I could find, the better. Now there's lots of planners out there that are not bulky. I really like the plum paper planner that I used last year, but there was still a lot of dead space in it. There were a lot of little columns and I personally put that together. That was one of the things I really liked about the plum pa paper planner. Say that 10 times fast. Plum paper planner. <laughs> that was one of the things that I really liked about the plum paper planner but I still had a lot of wasted space. This is very straightforward for me. It's super simple. I think for me, the more parts that there are to it, the more little boxes, the more forms there are, all of the fun, frilly little pages that you can put together and have all these great ideas. They're wonderful and they're pretty and they're fun, but they're so time consuming. It, it just sucks up all my time because I love planners and I love all the organizing things, but I don't have time to sit in it for hours. I don't have time to sit and make everything super colorful. I have time to throw on some washi tape, couple, use a couple different colors and something, make a quick note, have a section to brain dump some information and move on with life. So that was my goal for this planner. And so far it's working really well. I'm using it. I'm in it every day. The big four things I like for my planner is to be colorful, functional, inspirational, and have room for me to brain dump because I have to do that. So those four things. That is it. That is my homeschool planner for our 2019-2020 school year. It is super simple and super underwhelming, but if you are someone that really likes to keep things simple and not complicated and want something that doesn't have all the frills, it is super easy to go do a Google Doc or to do PowerPoint or a Word Doc or anything like that. Just make it what you want, use the shapes, use the cut and paste options and things. Even if you are not tech savvy, like me, you can still figure it out. It is super simple. And if you want to get something a little snazzier with it, there's a million YouTube tutorials you could use to help yourself out with that. So I hope you guys found this helpful or inspirational for your upcoming 2019-2020 school year. If you haven't subscribed yet, I want to invite you to do so and hit the little notification bell so you stay up to date on all the videos that we put out. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.